David, please be seated. Yeah. Oh, what a gorgeous day we have in the sun. The sun, everything is cooperating so beautifully for us. Uh, just a bit of formality before we begin. Our co-sponsors, Raytown Council on Aging, Raytown Arts Council, Raytown Retired Teachers Association, and Margaret McNair, Chapter DAR, welcome you to this tribute and thank you celebration honoring our American veterans. We as all citizens share a tremendous pride in our servicemen who courageously served our country. And we join others throughout our nation in a tribute to express gratitude and pride in these noble Americans. The opening ceremony of Color Guard presentation. <coughs> Letter of 
a member of the Civil War, either rebel or Confederate, who's died. And he's giving a letter to send to his father. The second one is a piece composed by Joseph Martin Paul, a song for an unsung Negro, which most of these gentlemen sitting out here were. And I think it's important that we remember the sacrifice that those gentlemen made for our freedom. And then we want to finish with the battle of the Republic. This is dedicated to you fellas and for the wonderful service that you gave to our country.
You might want to hold on to these flowers because they don't look nearly as good in front of me as they do in front of you. <laughs> Alan said she likes surprises. Well, I want to thank you for, for asking me to speak today at this special celebration. Thank you to the groups, as Alan mentioned earlier, that, that made this celebration happen. The City of Greytown's Council on Aging, Greytown Arts Council, Greytown Retired Teachers Association, Marguerite McNair Chapter of Daughters of the American Revolution, and of course the Raytown Quality Schools. And I'd like to give uh, Alan just one more thank you for, from the bottom of my heart. This, this lady, as I said earlier, put this event on. Her purpose was to reach out to, to each of you that, uh, you know, it, it's so easy as we go through our daily lives to, to not thank our veterans. I was at a uh, ribbon cutting yesterday at McDonald's and there were, there were young men and women who had just signed up within the last six months to serve our nation, and they were there as a part of the uh, National Guard at that event, and it was, it was as good to see in their eyes as I've seen each of your eyes today the, um, what it means to be, to be thankful, we to be thankful for you for what you do, but the pride that they have in their eyes is what you have in your eyes today. So Alice, thank you again for, for all that you've done to, to represent these, these fine folks. In 1918, on the 11th hour of the 11th day of that 11th month, 11th month, World War I guns fell silent and peace began to return to Europe. So, November 11th, 1919, President Woodrow Wilson proclaimed Armistice Day, a day of solemn pride in the heroism of those who died in this country's service. For two full minutes in the middle of the day, all traffic and business stopped across our nation. Stop as Americans took time to remember family and friends who fought and those who never came home from the war that was to end all wars. After World War II and the Korean War, the 83rd Congress, at the urging of veteran service organizations, amended the act by striking out the word armistice and inserting the word veterans. And on October 8, 1954, President Dwight D. Eisenhower issued the first Veterans Day proclamation, which stated, in order to ensure proper and widespread service of this anniversary, all veterans, all veterans organizations, the entire citizenry, will, will wish to join hands in the common purpose of celebrating all who serve. Tomorrow, November 11th, in Arlington, in our own nation, at 11 o'clock, the color guard of all military services will honor our veterans and the president will place a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier. The headstones that dotted across the cemetery covers more than 600 acres in Arlington. Hundreds of millions of people, those in Raytown, the United States, and around the world sleep in peace today because more than a million Americans rest in peace in graves marked and unmarked all across the world. Today we come to say we owe you a debt. We can never repay. We gather in Raytown to focus attention on the important purpose of Veterans Day. Not to be confused with Memorial Day, which celebrates all those who have given their lives. Today is a celebration to honor all of our American veterans for their patriotism, love of country, and willingness to serve and sacrifice for the common good. We remember every man and woman who has taken up arms to defend our country. Many have died in, the, in now historic places, the Battle of the Wilderness, Normandy, Iwo Jima, Vietnam, Kuwait. Many others fought bravely and thankfully returned home to live out happy, happy, accomplished lives among their friends, families, and loved ones. Still others remind us that even when America is not at war, the men and women of our military risk and sometimes give their lives for peace. We honor every soldier, sailor, Marine and Coast Guardsmen today, who gave some of the best years of their lives to the service of the United States and stood ready to give life itself on our behalf. 25 million military veterans walk among us, and on this day, our nation, our state, and the city of Raytown thanks you all. We salute them for their part in the preservation of freedom and honor them for their courage and devotion to country. 
will serve our liberators in the best tradition of America. Their actions have made our nation safer. Their actions have also upheld the ideals of America's founding, which defines us still today. Our nation values freedom, not just for ourselves, but for all. Our military possesses an unwavering belief in the idea of America, that no matter where you come from, what you look like, or who your parents are, the United States of America is a place where everything is possible. Our veterans continue to stand up for those timeless American ideals of liberty, self-determination, and equal opportunity. We also honor the families of those who have lost loved ones and who have supported the veterans as they have aged and continue to support them today. As our national anthem states, we are the land of the free and the home of the brave. So it is with our conviction that we honor you, our heroes. Over many years, our community has been blessed by your leadership and the mentorship you provided to each of us here in Raytown, and that includes myself. I use your examples to help guide me in my decisions if I make civic decisions from half the city, as well as in my own family duties. Your impact upon this community has been strong over the years, and your continued insight, reflections, and mentoring are vital to all of us as we go forward. My hope is that as we pause here today, that all Americans will pause tomorrow, November 11th, in tribute to the priceless contribution of all veterans. Let us go out and show our appreciation and try to live that appreciation every day. Thank you. May God bless all the members of our armed forces, whether on active duty or retired. May God bless the city of Raytown. May God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, William Bauer. You know, there's some people who are standing, and there are some empty seats up here. If you'd like to take your seat up here to find that place, it's up to you. There are a few. <clears throat> well, he's given us much to ponder. Uh, all the heroes who gave their lives in combat while serving our country inspired a sense of duty, of course, and faith in this great nation, and a protector of life and liberty for all Americans. And they do res uh, deserve respect and recognition for their services. And we remember the many who made the greatest sacrifice for peace, part of the terrible cost of any war, though they would never know the rewards of the ultimate victory they helped to achieve. In their memory, we will present the memorial wreath. Please stand. Yeah.
Before our color guard, please. Mark McConnell. Mark, you didn't hear me. They have done a fantastic job, and I want to introduce each one of them, but we really appreciate all veterans and, of course, in the different branches. Okay, he might be seated. Oh, there he is. We wanted to thank you, Mark, so much for the fellows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a great afternoon. A celebration of this magnitude would not be complete without that robust, fantastic music filling the air with those tremendous brass sounds of a community band as it presents the Armed Forces Pride of America. And when you hear those familiar strains of a specific branch in which you or a relative has or is serving, or if you're the widow of a veteran who has served in that particular branch, we encourage you to stand so we may acknowledge your service to the country. All right. Thank you. 
when Alice called me over half a decade ago, and we wondered about having a, a, a service like this in, in Raytown, um, you know, who would come? How many have fallen? Would young people appreciate it? We didn't know. We don't have a big ceremony here like in Kansas City or New York City. But another thing comes to mind, and that is that, that when servicemen and women go and protect our country with their lives, when they come home, whether they're from New York or Raytown, their, their foot lands on the same sacred ground. And when they don't come home, they are missed by the same feelings and reverence by each and every one of us, no matter whether it's from Raytown or New York. So we decided to do it, and look what we have today, keep on going. There was a, at the same time we were talking about putting together something like this, I, I uh, brought up the fact that I had an associate who felt the same way about service to the country, and he had put together a little video, a short video that it, it, it captures feelings about the war, no matter whether you're anti-war or pro-war or, 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 or this country or any country, you have your people fighting for you, your men and women fighting for your own life and your safety. It brings up some feelings that are very unique. And so I'm going to share this one with you today. Gentlemen, the lights, please. Thank you. 
place, please. It's very touching, isn't it? And did you notice the, the uh, absence of women veterans in that video? Um, let, <clears throat> let the generation, a friend of mine sent this something. She was a nurse, a nurse lieutenant in the Army, and she uh, has passed away since. But I kept her note, and it says, let the generations know that the women in uniform also guaranteed their freedom. That our resolve was as great as the great men who stood among us, and with victory, our hearts were just as full, and they beat just as fast. That the tears fell just as hard for those we left behind us. And we've always appreciated it. And it's a reminder, too, that it is important that in our celebration today, we salute the veterans, widows, and widowers. We honor them with a commemoration of their sacrifice. Oh, I need the lights on. Lights on. There we go. The lights should all be on by now. We'll get back to that. Uh, let's go back for just a moment. When a band played the Armed Forces, the Pride of America, and the branch service songs, our many distinguished guests here today stood proudly for recognition. How appropriate. Why? Because each one is the pride of America. You know, it's brought to our attention that more than, we use more than 2,500 of these fellows and women every day. The need to, is mandatory that we can bear a, a creation for those who are with us today. And we intend to do that right now. Um, we have the cards. People have registered when they came in. And we have a BJ who will be calling the name. And one of the women who are on duty back here will take your certificate to you. You signed your certificate when you came in. So we'll wait until they give it to you. All right, BJ? Floyd Anderson, Army. U.S. Air Force. Richard Bisonhurst, U.S. Air Force. Don Milk, Army. So he's gone. Gerard Bennett, he U.S. Marine Corps. Yes. Gary Alvestead, Army. George Chase, Navy. Joe Kramer, Navy. Okay. William Dean, U.S. Air Force. Hawkins, 
Deshaun Hunter, U.S. Coast Guard. Whitson Kirk, Army. Carl Matera, Air Force, Korea. Dr. Gerald Lee, Army. Lisa Long, U.S. Marine Corps. Richard Matthews, U.S. Air Force. Mark McCunniff, U.S. Marine Corps. Alan Miller, U.S. Air Force. Greg Moffat, U.S. Air Force. Donald O'Rell, Navy. Sage Navy. <laughs> David Schneck, Navy. Larry Schwerdman, Army. Scott, Air Force. <laughs> Frank Sissel, Army. Stevens, Navy. Ronald Stockton, U.S. Air Force.
recognition of widows and widowers. Bonnie Barber. Army. Gail Gam. Doris Lindsay with the Army. Doris Roseberry of the Army. Charlie Matson with the Army. And last but not least, Alice Stoll. We will get you a certificate too, all right? Um, but let the gentleman, let's see. As we hear today's closing dedication to our country, the Raytown Community Band will play that rousing, patriotic stars and stripes forever, explaining our dedication to our country. Bob? Bob? <coughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. 